People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Wayne H., would you consider having a conversation about exogenous ketones? Do they help in cardiovascular disease and cancers? Do they add any benefit to intermittent fasting? Well, if you listen to somebody like Dr. Boz, they would say yes. Clearly, there's no question that it is not as endogenous ketones. When we go on a keto diet, or any time you lose weight, you burn fat. And in order to burn fat, fat is a triglyceride. So you've got the tri meaning three places on the glycerin molecule, you have a fatty acid. The fatty acid, by the way, is what replaces cholesterol on the large, fluffy LDL and HDL particles when you have problems with carb metabolism. Now, in a different space, one of the questions is, what do you burn when you don't have carbs around? You burn fatty acids. So a lot of people have said, well, logically, fatty acids bring a lot of health to the table. For example, cancers don't metabolize fats very well. A lot of cancers do, some don't. If you have questions about that, go back to one of my old videos on the Warburg effect, W-A-R-B-U-R-G. The point behind that little bunny hole, and it's not a bunny hole, and it's the question that Wayne is asking here. Cancers are evolved backwards. They're a very unsophisticated cell with a very unsophisticated metabolism. A lot of cancers can only burn carbs. They cannot burn fats very well. So you look back at history, you look at the current state of medicine. Keto diets are recommended for a lot of things. Cancer, many cancers being one of them. If you go to the cancer centers, a lot of them have strong recommendations for a keto diet for many of the cancers because of this issue. And if you go back in history, keto diet was also used for things like some refractory seizures. So the point behind that is burning ketones must have a good effect. It helps fight cancers. It helps decrease some seizures. Again, this is some categories, some things. Then the next logic would be, well, if you're not making them, can you burn? In other words, can you drink those endogenous ketones? Can you get exogenous ketones, ketones in the diet? Can you take those ketones in the diet and it still have the same positive effect? Not nearly as much as endogenous ketones. And think about cancer, for example. The thing that impacts the cancer is not the ketone is killing the cancer, it's that there are no carbs to burn. So if you eat up a bunch of carbs, but you add exogenous ketones to your diet, you still got carbs there for the cancer to use for energy. So in a whole bunch of different ways, exogenous ketones probably aren't as good as a lot of people want to think. I've used them a couple of times. I don't use them very much. I think it's much more powerful to develop endogenous ketones by decreasing your carb intake. So then you get again into that debate on, okay, well, we know that, but it still helps a little bit. I won't argue that. I think they do help a little bit. No question.